Hello, everyone. Um, welcome to our first week of online learning. Um, I'm just getting the hang of this, so stick with me. Um, but I'd like to start with the most important thing, which is still a picture of me. Um, I have bad news, though, which is that my roommates left and they took their cat with them. So I no longer get to spend my days with the cat, Sam, and it's really sad. It's probably like the smallest problem compared to everyone else in the world's problems. So I'll be okay. Um, but I hope you're finding someone at home that can keep you sane or some way to relieve some of the stress of being stuck inside. Um, I've been taking a lot of walks outside and it's pretty helpful as long as you stay far away from people. Um, but yeah, find your thing to, to keep yourself sane. Um, so this week, we are going to continue our learning about um, World War II. We, when we were in class, we took our World War II test, um, which all of you should have taken. And if you haven't, I sent you an email. It's online. Take it. Um, and we're going to continue our learning by talking about something that happened um, at the end of World War II. Um, some of you have heard of this. Um, it is the bombing of Hiroshima and Nagasaki, two cities in Japan um, by the United States. It is the only time that an atomic bomb has been used against another country in warfare. Um, so it's a pretty big deal. Um, and we're going to be figuring out if it was acceptable for the United States to do that. Um, so this week, it's all about learning what happened. Um, you watch, you should have watched a video or you will soon and done a quick background reading um, about how many people were killed, um, whether or not they were expecting it. Um, we're gonna do a quick lecture now and at the end, you'll have some readings and a quiz to take. Um, so it should be similar to a regular class. Um, next week, just to preview, we're gonna be doing the same kind, the same topic. Um, and you're going to take all of the information that you learned this week to write a response about whether this was acceptable, um, our dropping of the atomic bomb. But don't worry about that for now. This week, you're just trying to learn everything you can. Um, so I asked you to do a warm up question in step one. Um, and the question it goes like this If a country is at war with another country, is it acceptable for that country to do anything they want in order to win? Um, this question usually gets a lot of disagreement. On the one hand, people are like, of course it's acceptable. We're at war with them. They are trying to kill us. So we should be able to do anything it takes to win that war. Um, that's how war is. But on the other hand, you have people who say things like, look, I understand we're at war, war is bad, but just because we're at war doesn't mean we lose all of our morality. There should be rules or at least expectations about who it's okay to go after. Can you go after civilians? Um, how can you go after them? You know, can you torture them? Is that acceptable? They're sort of like, you know, war is obviously bad, but you can do things that make war even worse. Um, so this is a question that people still argue about today, um, but it's definitely one that is at the core of this question of whether we should have dropped the atomic bomb or not. Um, in case you have not already done step one of the lesson that I posted on Google Classroom, I'd like you to stop here and go do that. Um, it will give you some context, some background as to what the United States did and sort of when this all fit into the timeline of World War II. Um, but if you have done that already, um, then please have your lesson open to step two um, and you'll see a box there where you can take your notes um, so just type in what you see on the screen and anything else that you hear that is worth including. All right. Dropping the atomic bomb. Um, you don't have a notebook, so there's no page. But write these notes down. So dropping the atomic bomb. Um, so we are still in the midst of World War II, but we are getting close to the end. Um, one country has surrendered, but another one is still fighting. So. First note, by July 1945, blank had surrendered, but the United States was still fighting 
blank in the Pacific. So think about America's two main enemies in World War II. Um, and you can probably guess that it was Germany that had already surrendered. Um, and the United States was still fighting Japan in the Pacific. And I think your clue there is that the Pacific Ocean. So we know that Japan is on the other side of the Pacific Ocean from the United States. Um, this map down below um, gives a sort of explanation for why the war against Japan took so long. Um, so starting from the Pearl Harbor attack, um, the United States sort of regrouped, rebuilt its supplies, um, and then went on the offensive. But what it had to do was sail from island to island to island that Japan had occupied. And at each of these islands, they have to have a big war against the Japanese or a big battle against the Japanese people that are stationed there. So they have to send their Marines off the boat. They get shot on the beach. It takes weeks of fighting to take the island. Um, they're successful, but then, okay, you have to move on to the next one. So they're going around and around and around the Pacific, um, fighting these battles. Um, it is taking a long time. By July 1945, we've sort of got Japan mostly stuck to its home home islands, these islands right here, um, but they're still at it. They are still not surrendering. They are still at war with the United States and we are at war with them. So as we've talked about, when a war ends, the two countries have to come to an agreement about what that is going to look like. They have to sign a treaty. Um, and often it'll say like one side has to give up all of its weapons, promise never to fight again, things like this. Um, the United States had a really clear goal um, that they wanted. And so this is the second note. The US said that for Japan to blank, they must give up their emperor. And I think I've probably already said this, the answer. So for Japan to surrender, they must give up their emperor. This is the Japanese emperor on the right. Um, his name is Emperor Hirohito. Um, so in Japanese society, the emperor was like a god. Um, they, people weren't really allowed to see the emperor in public. The emperor didn't speak. It was like they were so revered, so special, so important that he was almost like removed from society. But the emperor was the one who was giving the orders, was in charge of the Japanese government, the Japanese military, um, when they were doing all of this World War II stuff. And the United States was afraid that if the emperor was allowed to stay in charge, even if the emperor surrendered, but the emperor was allowed to stay in charge, that Japan might start doing the same bad stuff, taking over land that it had done before. So the United States was like the only way we are going to let you surrender Japan is for your emperor to step down. Um, for the Japanese people, that's crazy. They, if they think their emperor is a god, how could the emperor possibly step down, you know? Um, so this is uh, an expectation that is too far for the Japanese people. They won't accept it, and so they won't surrender, um, which means that the United States and Japan are sort of on this collision course. Um, down on the bottom left there, you've got the three um, leaders of the allies. In the middle is Harry Truman. He was the US president after President Roosevelt died. He died in office actually during World War II. Um, to the left is Winston Churchill. He is the leader of England during World War II. Um, and to the right is Joseph Stalin. Um, he was the leader of the Soviet Union, our third ally. Still surprising they were our ally because they were communist, but Stalin was the leader in charge of the Soviet Union. He was an American ally. Um, and so these three were the ones who were sort of planning how the war would end. Um, the last note. So most of the battle in the Pacific was done by the United States. England and the Soviet Union, they spent most of their energy focused on Germany because Germany was right next to them and was trying to attack those countries. Um, the United States was also fighting in Europe, but at the same time, we're sort of taking Japan on pretty much by ourselves. So the third note, um, while the United States fought Japan mostly alone, our ally, the blank, was preparing to join us in fighting them. 
Mm, is it England? Is it the Soviet Union? It's the Soviet Union. Um, that while the United States was fighting alone, um, they're doing an okay job. The Soviet Union was taking care of the Nazis, um, but then the Nazis were defeated. So the Soviet Union was like, all right, Japan's on my other side because the Soviet Union's massive. Um, so it actually, Japan's on one side of it. So the Soviet Union's like, we're gonna maybe think about attacking Japan now that we've beaten the Nazis. Um, so this hasn't happened yet. Um, and some of the readings you'll get to, you'll start to understand like this idea of the Soviet Union getting involved. Um, helps us understand whether or not the United States was made the right decision to drop the bomb. Um, but yeah, I think these three pieces of information are going to be really important for helping you understand the readings. Um, and I'm excited for you to do them. Um, so the next step is for you to um, read at least two of the four sources that I have posted. Um, if you have time to read them all, read them all. But if you only have time to do sort of the minimum, then read two of them. Um, and you'll see the reading on top, and then you can answer your questions in the boxes on the side. Um, the more readings you do, the better your response is going to be next week. Um, and next week, you're going to be writing your response um, using evidence from these readings. So that's sort of the purpose of these. Read them with an idea of how can I use this to argue that it was acceptable to drop the atomic bomb or that it was unacceptable to drop the atomic bomb. Um, and when you're done with those readings, the last thing you should do is take the quiz. Uh, step four, it's a weekly quiz now, not a daily quiz, because I only can give you work once a week. Um, but it's going to look really familiar. Um, so my goal is to read all of the work. I would like you to have this done by next Tuesday, if you can. Um, so I can give you feedback before next Wednesday when I will post the second half of this um, lesson about doing the writing. I'd like to give you feedback on the work you do this week before you start doing the writing the following week. Um, if you have any questions, you can email me. My email address is right there. Um, comment in the Google Classroom text me. Um, for all of these things, I will try to respond in 24 hours. Um, I will hopefully be able to respond much sooner than that. I'm kind of not that busy right now, so it should be fine. But yeah, um, let me know what you need. If you have questions, um, cool. Um, I'm really sorry we're stuck learning this way. Um, I hope you are still able to engage with this work. Um, I think it's really interesting. And I'm also open to teaching different things now since we're in this new style. So if you have anything you really want to learn about, um, let me know and we can talk about it. Okay, I think that's it for me. I'll sign off now um, and be safe. I miss you all.